Hi there, I'm going to talk about how the golden ratio appears to be a basis for exaltation degrees and also for some of the characteristics of Egyptian bounds. And these are discoveries made by astrologer Raphael Gilbrand. His website is www.astrologia-traditional.net, so that website is in Spanish. Raphael is also fluent in German and English. Uh, so these are some discoveries that he has made that I think are very exciting and I want to share these with you. And his discoveries on the golden ratio in a way complement the, the discoveries that I made and presented in two other videos on the relationship of prime numbers to fundamental ideas in astrology. The reason I say that, that this complements is because both of us have discovered that mathematics, basic concepts of numbers appear to be influencing um, these original concepts that, that were developed in ancient astrology. Um, so let's take a look at this. Uh, now this is just the tip of the iceberg. I'm just going to show a, a few little things that Raphael has discovered. He has an entire book that's coming out um, in December 2014 is, is the expected date of release. I believe it will be in Spanish. Hopefully um, it's going to create some excitement and people will translate to other languages. Uh, maybe he'll help translate it himself. In, in any case, it's very exciting material. He has a huge amount of material. This is just to give you a taste of some of the things he's come up with. Now, here we see the exaltation degrees of the planets. Mars is said to be exalted at 28 degrees Capricorn. Venus 27 Pisces, Sun 19 Aries, Aries Moon 3 Taurus, Jupiter 15 Cancer according to many references, 5 degrees Cancer according to some of the Vedic tradition, Mercury 15 Virgo, Saturn's given sometimes 21 Libra, sometimes 15 Libra, um, sometimes there are different degrees given, most of these are, are pretty standard according to all the sources, and they appear to be somewhat randomly strewn about. Now. Raphael noticed that the angle from Moon to Mercury is 132 degrees. The angle from Mercury to Sun, the long way around, coming back around, is 214 degrees. If you divide 132 by 214, you get 0 0.617. 0 0.618 is known as the golden ratio. So, for example, uh, if we call it 132.25, we would get it almost precisely the golden ratio, 132.25 divided by 214 is 0.618. If you divide it the other way around, the large number by the small number, you get 1.618. This is one, one reason among many that it's a golden ratio. No matter which way you divide, you get this remainder of 0.618. Um, so, you, we, can, we often call the golden ratio 0.618 or 1.618, it's the same thing. Uh, so in any case, that's curious, that Mercury, which is a neutral planet, it's neither diurnal nor nocturnal according to the ancient tradition, is separated by the lights according to the golden ratio. Is that a coincidence? Round it off to the nearest degree, it's as close as we can get to the golden ratio. Very curious coincidence. Another coincidence is that the Sun is at the golden ratio between Moon and Venus. Uh, the angle of Sun to Venus, this shorter green line, curved line, is 22 degrees. From Moon to Venus is 36 degrees. Divide 22 by 36. You get about as close as we're going to get with small, smaller whole numbers, 0.611. Is that a coincidence? Another example would be Mars to Venus, 59 degrees. Venus to the Vedic uh, exaltation degree, 5 degrees Cancer, is 98. 59 divided by 98 is 0 0.602. Not quite as close to 0 0.618, but there's also evidence that these degrees might have shifted a little bit over the years, and um, that some of the traditions may even place it more precisely at 0 0.618. All this is explained in, in his book. Um, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. Venus and Mars um, 
or to diur to nocturnal planets and Jupiter rules Venus the reasons why these planets are selected and some of the other golden ratios this goes on and on and on the number of coincidences is amazing I am just here in this video to give you an introduction to to some of these insights about how numbers appear to have influenced the thinking of the ancient astrologers in developing these concepts we saw it with um, with prime numbers in the two videos that I made on things that I noticed and now we're seeing it with the golden ratio uh, two things that uh, are pretty well documented that the ancient people at the time in the first millennium BC when a lot of these ideas were developed uh, that they were very very much aware of um, so it's entirely possible what we're doing here is these ancient books say Mars is exalted in 28 degrees Capricorn they don't tell us why they don't explain at least as far as I know maybe somebody will discover more books or translate them more deeply and and find a rationale explained in the ancient texts but for the most part they just tell us these rules um, so in trying to figure out where these rules might have come from uh, people like myself and, and Raphael Gilbrand have discovered amazing coincidences with numbers and it appears that number theory influenced the astrological ideas. Now I'll just show you one more example of what uh, Raphael has discovered. Um, here is the Egyptian terms also called bounds. This is from Lee Lehman's website. Um, where she has tables of these things and, and explanations of them. Uh, now, this is interesting. We are, we're going to compare. What Raphael did is he compared the number of degrees of the uh, nocturnal planets, which are Venus and Mars, to the planets that are not nocturnal. Um, this is just defined by the ancient astrologers, that each planet is associated with being diurnal or nocturnal. And the nocturnal planets are uh, moon, Venus, and Mars. So if we take the, the Venus and Mars, because the Sun and Moon are not in this table, so we have only the five visible planets, not the Sun and Moon. We take the two nocturnal planets, and we count up how many degrees are in the diurnal half of the zodiac. The diurnal half of the zodiac starts at Leo, one, two, three, four, five, six, and ends at Capricorn. I discussed this in the other two videos. Most of you are probably familiar with this that uh, the ruling planets of the signs are symmetric and one half has the Sun, the other half has the Moon. So if we count up how many degrees Venus and Mars occupy, like Venus has five degrees here, uh, six degrees here for Mars, so five plus six would be eleven, and you keep adding it up all the way through for that half, it ends up that Venus and Mars occupy sixty-nine degrees the other three planets occupy 111 degrees and the ratio well for no particular reason we've divided the large number by the small number here and we get almost exactly probably ex as exact as you can get I imagine I didn't verify to the golden ratio using whole numbers now what's really interesting about this is we're talking about the balance of the nocturnal planets to the non nocturnal planets um, we we might want the perfect balance because we're talking about like a yin yang sort of thing here a perfect balance you might say would be 50 50 another perfect balance would be the golden ratio and they're balanced out to be exactly the golden ratio I think that that's a really peculiar coincidence is it just a coincidence or was it done by design we don't know but the, when the number of coincidences increases and increases and increases and they fit very precisely then you begin to think this is not a coincidence uh, this must have been by design if we do the feminine half uh, the nocturnal half from Aquarius Aquarius Pisces Aries Taurus Gemini Cancer we get 79 instead of 69 79 degrees so we have more degrees occupied by the nocturnal planets in the nocturnal half of the zodiac. That makes sense, right? We have 79 degrees. The Venus and Mars are occupying more of the nocturnal half of the zodiac, which is what we would expect. But we end up with 79. 79 um, degrees are 
for the nocturnal planets, 101 for the other planets. We get 1.278, which doesn't look automatically very interesting. It's not the um, the golden ratio. Guess what? You square 1.278, and you get extremely close to the golden ratio. Uh, now, are we getting a little far-fetched here? Is Raphael on a fishing expedition? Like now we're going to square it? Not really. Remember the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Going back right about to the heart of the time in around 500 BCs when a lot of these ideas appear to have been developed or revived. Um, squaring functions was very, very important to the Pythagoreans. Um, so if we're going to have the golden ratio for one half, we could have the square root of it for the other half and give more feminine nocturnal planets to the nocturnal half of the zodiac. It's eerily consistent. Eerily, I mean, surprisingly consistent, makes us suspect that this could be done by design. Um, so this is just to give you a few, just a, a quick introduction to some of the coincidences that Raphael has discovered. And he's got tons of them. This is just the beginning. And the numbers part of it, <clears throat> like the golden ratio, is only one part of it. There's also uh, sect and, and other concepts that are used combined with the numerical ideas that fit together to create an intricate system. So the conclusions. It does appear that both prime numbers and the golden ratio are part of the reasoning and rationale behind fundamental astrological ideas. It appears to be because the number of coincidences are so great. And again, <clears throat> I'm only giving you the tip of the iceberg here as far as Raphael's discoveries go. Number two, uh, it's not just numbers that are behind astrology. It's clear that ideas like sect um, and, and other ideas also work into the, uh, the development of, of these ideas. Um, number three, this is my own speculation. I think it's a reasonable one. I think it's reasonable to assume that different astrologers were I influenced by different underlying concepts. I, it's unlikely that there be one monolithic astrologer astrology, like Hermes Trismegistus, or um, these two astrologers, Nechepso and Pedasiris, are often identified in the ancient literature as in inventing a lot of the astrological ideas or uh, discovering them. Even if that's true, I think it's reasonable to assume that different people would bring in different perceptions and ideas, and that's why we have things like differences of whether Jupiter's at 5 Cancer or 15 Cancer. By the way, if you put it at 15 Cancer, instead of 98 degrees from Venus, it's 108. 108 is a special number. So different people may have picked up on different ideas. Um, so in my videos, I showed how the, the, the two videos where I showed some of the things I noticed um, where I present that prime numbers are a basis for how uh, some of the planets were organized in the Egyptian, or in my case it was the uh, Ptolemaic bound system. Um, that was probably one inspiration for how to do it. Raphael's found other inspirations for how the uh, Egyptian bounds in particular, more than the Ptolemaic, are laid out. Um, all of these things could, could be influencing different people thinking at the same time uh, in that first millennium BC. So, all I'm saying here is that probably different astrologers were influenced by different underlying concepts. The reason I'm emphasizing that is that if we see that one idea explains the layout better than another idea, it doesn't mean that the other idea was never used. Probably different astrologers were influenced by different things, uh, different uh, numerical observations, prime numbers, golden ratios, etc., relationships of sect, things related to interpretations. Um, the bottom line is that the astrological ideas are like an alchemical formula, where when you unravel it and you uncover it, you see these symmetries, symmetries of prime numbers. You see these golden ratio relationships. It, it, it's like a an occult or hidden tapestry that you can unravel uh, if you have the eyes to see it. 
uh, and di probably different people got excited and inspired and noticed uh, different relationships, different patterns, uh, di different rationales for, for why the cosmos would have been constructed in a certain way. Um, and I want to underscore the point that queer and, unambigu and unambiguous confirmation of most of these ideas from ancient, ancient documents has not yet, yet been found. We, these, what we're doing is we're getting the, looking at these formulas, these ideas that are given, and trying to figure out how they came up with it. I suspect that someday we're going to find more documents, better translations, that are going to make it clearer and clearer that these ideas on prime numbers and golden ratios as a foundation for astrology, I think they're going to become clearer because personally I think the evidence is, is too strong. The coincidences are way too strong uh, for it to be merely coincidence. Some of this had to be by design. That's just my impression from looking at all this. Um, so again, this is only the tip of the iceberg regarding the findings of Raphael Gilbrand. Um, he had his book in Spanish, I, I believe it's going to be in Spanish, expected out next month. I'm making this video in November 2014. I believe it's going to be out very soon. Um, his website has lots of information. Um, he is fluent in at least three languages, as I mentioned. Uh, and so this information will become will be co coming out and making a bigger impact in astrology. And I'm just giving you a heads up um, on some of the new exciting developments and understanding the roots of astrology uh, using what I'm mentioning here is the golden ratio and complements, as I mentioned, the, the things that I've noticed regarding prime numbers. It complements in the sense that we're having from two independent sources uh, discoveries of how fundamental principles of number theory that were known about in ancient times coincide with fundamental principles of astrology. Okay, I hope you found that interesting. God bless. Namaste.